Hello everyone, Pentuf here today for an another Swedish review and this time we are talking about the tier 8, the Emil one, which is in my opinion one, if not the best, out of the new line, the tier 8. And that's cool, because usually having a good tank at tier 8 means that you're gonna enjoy it, because tier to tier compared, tier 8 is probably among the best tiers to play on. So. What do you need to know about this tank? We're gonna go onto the armor profile after. We are first gonna talk about the gun. The gun here is not an auto reloader like it's the case on the tier 9 or even the tier 10 from the new line. Here it's a regular auto loader, but a really cool one actually because your gun dispersion is really nice, 0.32. Your magazine reload time is a little bit longer than the one you have on the MX5100, but as you have a better average damage, it's not that bad. Shell reload time, three seconds between each shell, meaning you can burst all your shells in 6 seconds for a total DPM of nearly 2.1k. We have 320 alpha damage with regular shells, 270 with APCRs and 400 with high explosive. It features an amazing penetration with regular shells but definitely not the best with your gold shell. Look at this, 254. It's definitely not a lot. And you're going to struggle a lot when you're facing tier 9s and you have to deal damage using gold shells because you can penetrate. Regardless, this gun is amazing if we forget about the APCR penetration. Now, for the turret, good view range, uh, bad Turn rate, at least in my opinion, 24 degrees seconds is definitely not enough. For the mobility, you're quite slow because you're really well armored. But you're not as slow as the Emil 2 and the Krenwagen to compare with uh, tier to tier compared. With this one, you will go around 35 kilometers per hour when fully equipped with a 100% crew, which is neither bad or good. It's just average. Let's say that you have the same... Yeah, you should have the same mobility as the E75TS if you want something to compare with. Now, for your tracks, uh, pfft, I don't really have anything to say, I mean it's pretty average, 36 degrees per second, it's still nice knowing that your tank is really really big in terms of armor, but nothing to be really excited about. Now, how I am equipping my tank, I first go for the calibrated shells as it increases my average penetration and I don't see the point of using improved ventilation. After I go for the enhanced gun lane drive and the vertical stabilizer as I have an auto loader tank, I really want to maximize my aiming time to avoid missing my shells when shooting. After I go for the defense system because I'm not gonna ram anybody, the enhanced armor because my armor overall is broken, we're gonna see that later on during this video. The toolbox because an end is worthless, improved optics because I'm not gonna camp, I'm not a tank destroyer, engine accelerator to improve a little bit my mobility which is average at best and finally the consumable delivery system because as you don't have any adrenaline you don't have any use of IN consumable which makes your consumables uh, your longer. So that's it pretty much for the tank in the garage, now let's talk about it directly in Armor Inspector. Same as the Krenwagen, your armor is really impressive. First, let's talk about your weak spot, which is this lower plate here of 180mm. But even knowing it's a weak spot, a lot of tanks at tier 7 and tier 8 still don't have the average penetration necessary to go through, even with only 180mm. So you can expose it to tier 7, they are not gonna penetrate most of the time. Now, for the upper part, it's really well angled, still not that much much armor, you only have 220 to maybe 230 sometimes, but it's still enough, I mean, if you're facing tier 7, nobody will go through, and if you're facing tier 8, just make sure it's not an ice you want five to in front of you. Now you have those two little plates here, and you could think these are weak spots, easy to penetrate, but they are definitely not, don't try them, it's not, uh, it's not weak spots. Now, for the turret, you have 250 based armor without angling it, and on the top sides on on the turret cheeks, you have 270 millimeter. You also have a cupola, which is definitely not a weak spot, as you can see, 240 millimeters of armor. And for the rest of the tank, it's pretty likely to be penetrated because it's literally paper. But now what is interesting with this tank is that you're gonna play it in all down most of the time and you have 10 degrees of gun depression and here oh boy does this tank becomes interesting. Look at this beauty. You need to be aware that some tier 9s can go through that amount of armor especially tank destroyers but for tier 8s 
no problem except if maybe you're facing an rhm or nice you won't fight too but for the rest of the tanks at tier 8 and tier 7 not a single one of them will be able to penetrate you and that's why this tank is meant to be played in all down Concerning the playstyle to adopt with this tank, as you have an auto loader and not an auto reloader, you still have to hold down. I mean, expose your turret only most of the time, but here do it while being supported by your allies, because when you have 21 seconds of reload, you are extremely exposed to enemies, as most of the time you're not gonna face any auto loaders in front of you, and therefore, when they know all your three shells are gone, they're gonna try to push you. And if you wanna prevent it, you just have to stay with your allies so here we go playing aggressively on the t32 simply because i know the guy can't penetrate me we managed to sneak two shots is the third one gonna go in no that's why i didn't try it and now i'm gonna go for an another reload as waiting for my last shell to go on the t29 is not really worth it and i was expecting the guy not to push actually but it did so we're gonna have to wait here we are a little bit exposed that's why i'm hiding behind the rock and behind the lover as i really don't want to get penetrated by the t29 luckily for him for me sorry the guy went for a shot directly in my turret which is impenetrable for the t29 even with gold shells which allows us to get our complete reload and sneaking two shots in the guy before he dies now looking at the map you can see that they have their main forces located to the middle of the map which is perfect for me i mean mine is one of the best maps to play those new tanks on simply because it's it's a map made for hold down which is what is the main strength of the emil one so here we go trying to prevent them from taking the hill in order for them to being able to circle us but we failed the shot on the emil not a problem there is still the shift to go with so here we go we sneak the first shot we managed to track the guy it seems like he doesn't have any repair kit which allows us to sneak our second shot now we are reloading so we go back to a safe position when you are reloading there is no need to play aggressively and wait for your enemies to try to bounce your turret you should make sure just to protect yourself in order not to get any lucky penetrations that could occur actually now that we've completely reloaded we have to do something we need to prevent them from taking advantage of the hill and luckily for us as we reloaded the t32 decided to push which allowed us to completely destroy this guy in terms of hp so here we go sneaking some shots but there is a t34 2 in my back i wanted to push at first because i thought the t34 2 is gonna focus me but it seems like the guy has an opponent which is the yak panthers so i decided to come back to my previous position and take the hill instead so here we go, as my reload is nearly complete, I'm gonna push the hill and I'm gonna kill the Emil and the T32, which are both one shots for me, thanks to my great alpha damage of 320. First shot, first kill, the T32 bounces us, second shot, second kill. But I'm not gonna reload right now, I'm gonna try to take a sneaky shot on the T32 and luckily for us the RNG allowed us to sneak that shot in. Now we are reloading, we have to wait 21 seconds, but I'm pretty confident that this time as we are on the mine and as we are on the middle of the map, which is an all-down position, they shouldn't be able to penetrate me even with gold shells. I see the SU running by into the town, I'm not getting spotted here because I'm not reloaded yet, but here he's not gonna wait for me, which allows us to sneak a first shot. Am I gonna be able to sneak all my shots on the SU or is he gonna stay there? It seems like the guy wants to stay here, so I'm not gonna bother, I'm just gonna reload my whole clip and probably change my target. I see that my team needs me on the other side, as there is the SU 1.30pm completely ripping apart the rest of my team. I need to do something, so I decided to load HE shells and to go straight straight onto that guy. I'm pretty sure he thinks that I'm still focusing on the SU, that's why he went on the open like that. And oh boy, did you do a mistake. We go for the first shot on the SU with HE, second shot with HE. Unfortunately for us, we did really bad alpha damage with HE. I want to remind you that your HE alpha damage is 400 and we only did 330. But it's not a problem because with our whole clip, we managed to kill that guy. Now there is only the SU and I'm pretty confident because even if I take one shot I will still have the time to complete my reload and burst all my shells before he can shoot again. And here you're gonna see the mighty thing about the turret armor. Why is the SU not shooting? Because he's trying to shoot somewhere else than my turret because he knows he can penetrate. But unfortunately he doesn't have enough gun depression. He goes for a shot, H shot, only 200 on my turret and I just sneaked all my clip on that guy.
Great game there, 4 kills and nearly 5.6k damage. Of course, I did a lot of credits because my tank is enriched, I want to remind you. It's, if you buy the Emil 1, you will not have that kind of credits, of course. But I enriched it because I truly think this tank is worth getting enriched. It's an amazing tank and it's really versatile. That's what I like. Unlike the current wagon and the Emil 2, this one actually has the mobility to relocate when you need to, etc. It's, in my opinion, a better AMX 5100. To sum up the playstyle, you need to be in all down, but as you have an auto loader and not an auto reloader, you gotta make sure you are followed by your team or else people can push you and destroy you while you're reloading. Hope you enjoyed the review. If that's the case, feel free to subscribe, like and share, and I'm gonna see you soon for a new one on possibly the Swedish tanks.